Welcome along to another episode of the French Rugby Podcast with me, Tim Groves, ex-Scotland international Johnny Beattie and former France international Benjamin Kayser. Um, it's a show with a bit of a difference today because we'll be back with you again very soon for another episode that will feature all things top 14, European rugby, but we're going to wind the clock back a little bit today. Uh, and we've got an absolute legend of French rugby on the show for you. So we'll get him on very shortly. Uh, but first of all, how have you guys been? What have you been up to? Well, if I, if I start, Johnny, um, I was in Exeter on Saturday uh, to notice, so a really weird game. So I was commentating for the French, for French TV, Exeter to lose the semi-final of Champions Cup. Stunning game, um, incredible weather. Uh, the sun was out. Exeter is a beautiful city. It is absolutely chucking it down where I am now. Uh, the, the, in, in French, they have, but you guys, I think you've got the same expression, buckets of water. That's why I realized why England is so, is so green. It doesn't rain. It, it, it really feels like somebody's like broken a swimming pool somewhere and it just chucks it down. Um, but at the weekend in Exeter, the sun was out, um, two fantastic teams that sort of looked like pretty, pretty similar to, to one another, but the most bizarre um, commentating experience for me because there was no crowd, obviously. And, and, and for the first five minutes, just for the little sort of anecdote, um, in, in the earphones, we didn't have that, you know, that crowd noise, the thing. So for the first five minutes, we were literally like, on the, on, like the boys on, on, on the pitch. And, and it was super bizarre. Like on kickoff, you can't hear a thing. Obviously, the, the guys that are outside the, tw the 23 will make some noise when there's a good tackle, a try, a penalty, something. But while the game is playing, there's absolutely nothing. And that was, that was dreadful. So it just reminded me, bluntly punching my face, that it's a weird European um, sort of quarter semis and playoff time that we're seeing. It, it just doesn't seem completely normal to me <laughs> and it makes it even more weird. Uh, but again, like, oh, you and Uge summed it up really well in French press. He said, the guy, you know, you get a star, obviously, in France. Do you guys do that in England? Yeah, you do it for Leicester yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the star will not say COVID under it. It will just be a star. And, that will, you, you know, COVID hopefully will be just, um, will not be, the, the parallel with, with those, that European campaign will, will not, uh, you know, last for a lifetime. But, um, but, but a crazy game, uh, well-deserved victory. And I think we can speak about, again, how brave and smart hookers are. Because Luko and Dickie playing that, that penalty five minutes out just before halftime. I think I saw Baxter from the corner of my eye who was ready to go and punch him, I think. But, but then they scored. So that, just, that sums up the, the, that motivation and the belief within the Exeter side that I believe is going to be absolutely key for the final. Uh, they back themselves 400%. And this is what you need to deliver in those big games with no crowd. So long story short, I had a good weekend. I enjoyed my rugby, really weird. And now it's chucking it down, so I'm a bit depressed. We might touch a little bit on the European final later on because there's some big news coming out of wrestling uh, recently. But Johnny, what have you been up to? Uh, so I was meant to be there with you, Benji, but for BBC Radio, but obviously cannot travel now because of quarantine, so watched it from the couch. Um, was really impressed again with Exeter. I thought they're phenomenal. I think Baxter probably backs Cowan Dickey in that situation. Now he knows how yeah. good they are from five metres out. They're almost unstoppable. Um, Toulouse didn't look like they'd maybe done their homework and couldn't stop them once they got into that red zone, but then not many team teams can. Um, apart from that, enjoyed the other final. Completely different in the way it was played, but one piece of Finn magic in the game is completely unlocked. Also, if you take into account now, it's a completely different game for Saracens because they've been shorn of that depth. So they don't have, show, you know, they don't have a, a Brits, they don't have a burger, they don't have huge names coming off the bench to tie games up the last 20 minutes. So that was really interesting. And that one piece of magic from Finn and Vakatawa completely broke the game apart. Um, apart from that, what else have I been doing? I was at the opening of the 2023 World Cup train in Dax uh, on Tuesday, which was good fun. It's where I bumped into our guest who's coming on to talk to us shortly. Um, but that's been actually quite quiet. Kids are now back at school, which is great. Um, and enjoying some downtime as it starts to bucket now in the south of France as well. Well, you mentioned hanging out with our guest the other day, Johnny. So uh, we'll get him on now. And for the first Frenchman we've ever had on the podcast, uh, we've probably got beg your pardon. the best one ever. Beg, beg your pardon. <laughs> You're a host, you're a host, Benji, you don't count. Uh, for, the, for the first French guest we've had on the, on the podcast, we've uh, possibly got the best one 
ever. Uh, so one of the greatest ever France internationals, one of the best centres ever to play the game, Philippe Seller joins us. How are you? Hi, fine. Good. I am very good and um, we prepare one game for this weekend we, with, uh, with the club. In fact, not me, but uh, the, the coach, manager, prepare the, the game. And uh, well, we, we want to see one team uh, playing the greatest rugby, but uh, not sure to win, but uh, <laughs> because we play against uh, uh, Clermont away. <laughs> <laughs> it, will be, it will be very tough. <laughs> a pissed off, a pissed yeah. off Clermont team. You know away, Clermont pissed sure. off, eh? <laughs> How hard has the start of the season been for Agen? Taking into factor, you know, financially with COVID, everything that's happening, and sporting-wise as well, last year wasn't the greatest year for Agen. So how hard has the start of the season been for you guys this season? Yeah, we, we got a few problems in uh, preparation of the, the season. For example... Um, there were not a lot of um, uh, players uh, infected by, by the, the COVID, but uh, we got a few. And uh, we lost a few weeks to prepare collectively the, the, the season. That is not, uh, it was uh, negative uh, to, to, to prepare. But uh, as well, um, um, we, we, we have a lot of hopes uh, because the, uh, we have uh, one team uh, quite young, but uh, we, um, there were a few moves like every year on, on the club. Um, and um, we, we, we got a few players with more experience this year than uh, the previous years. Because uh, often we play with one young team. You know why? Because uh, uh, we, we, we have one team, one club uh, with... Um, less uh, money for than uh, another one and uh, we have to um, uh, to to play uh, the, the best rugby <laughs> we, we we have always uh, to um, uh, find an, another one players or young players on, on the club we have uh, one good academy we we finished on the last three years uh, first first and second uh, club um, for, for the academy is uh, something uh, very, very good, but we know as well um, it's difficult to keep the young players on the academy because uh, uh, we help them. But uh, another club uh, try to to find the, the premium players or young players. Every year yeah. we play to try to be a French champion, but for us. To win the our title is to finish twelve. <laughs> if we are twelve, we are French champions. Just, and just three, to say, three, three years ago we finished eleven, and we consider the club European champion. <laughs> Last year we were thirteen uh, when the championship finished there because uh, we, with the COVID and the Stade Francais was just uh, behind us because they didn't start well the, the season. But for us, really, uh, if the season could have been to be uh, to, to go to the end, it, 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 uh, it was, uh, well, no, it could have been uh, very difficult to stay in, in this position. Uh, it was uh, something good for us. Sorry about that. <laughs> but just, just to set the scene, people think of top 14 as racing, Montpellier, Stade Francais, Toulouse, Clermont, like clubs chucking it down with cash. All right, listen, Agen is not like that. Agen has got to build a good, decent budget with young, talented players who are very proud of where they are. So it's really important that, that, that the sort of the British public understands that that's the reality of French rugby. It's not just that some... You know, it's some crazy open checkbooks chucking it down for Kurt Nebile and all those guys. There's also teams who try to build with small budgets, talented players, grassroots sort of rugby, and they do. But on the other side, when COVID hit, and that's, what I, that's more going to be my question for Philippe, they were the only club who announced that apparently there was going to be zero uh, salary reductions uh, and pay cuts. Yeah. 
and because and the only one so all the other clubs were trembling and all the players were like no this is a disgrace and this and that the Ajahn president came out and said listen we don't overpay guys we know that yeah sometimes we can go to second division and we'll come back up and like Philippe said very humbly they, if they finish 12th or 11th they're ele European champions you know that's the mm. type of team that sort of knows its place and know their role but bloody hell they can play some good rugby as well and, mm. and the good side to that is that they don't take too, man, too much financial risk with their players and with the whole club and so when something extraordinary like COVID and the pandemic happens, then actually the flip and good side is that they said, no, listen, we pay what we have. We don't invent money. We don't invent a budget. And so actually they said no, no cut. We, we have one club with a financial less than another one. Okay, we know that. But uh, with the, the pandemic, with, with uh, the COVID, uh, for, for us, uh, we lost less money than another clubs. Uh, we lost more, more money, but uh, with a club uh, with a higher um, um, f financial uh, salary, um, it's more more difficult. The, the president, like you you said, he wants absolutely because of the salary on, on this club is less than a, another one, and um, the club could uh, do that is uh, to keep the same salary for each player, and. Uh, all the players were um, really um, uh, happy to 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 go to this uh, this decision by the, the president. And just before we move on to your playing career, Philippe, um, we should probably mention that you are obviously Mr. Agen, but you are a uh, director of rugby, and you're also heavily involved with the youngsters. So just tell us briefly, kind of what your role involves on a day to day. How much do you work with the first team? How much do you work with the, the young players? Uh, my, my role in the in the club uh, changed a little bit. I, I was uh, close to the, the, the team. Uh, like, like, um, there was one manager for sports, and I was a manager for out of the pitch. Yeah, and uh, all all the the um, uh, is a one role like uh, I don't know the, the term in English. Is a coordinator sportif, huh? and and uh, a coordinator sportif is uh, to have one link between the team and the players with inside on, on the on the club for the different uh, action uh, or mission uh, you, you can have and as well the link with outside uh, the, the different company or um, sponsors of the of the we are is a link with the outside for 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 example for example for different events uh, we have with the uh, with the uh, city with with the uh, department uh, the different public relation is uh, to organize as well and uh, all the pre-season uh, camp or match or the friendly game uh, and uh, the budget as well of the all the um, the, the the season for for the, the when we move uh, when we play away we i change a, a little bit uh, this, this year we create uh, i don't know the term in english we create uh, one fund dotation is a uh, something trust fund one one a fund a trust fund well a trust fund is a uh, to um, something to help uh, um, directly the 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 academy uh, inside the, the club uh, to to help the the young player, um, but as well to help uh, uh, the different uh, ch charity as well around uh, Agen, and uh, to think about uh, how to live better on, in the in uh, in one uh, in one city in one club uh, in the world. And you meant, Philippe, you mentioned that uh, Agen is a small place and it's difficult to compete with some of the other sides. But going back to your playing career, it wasn't always like that, was it? Because when you started off, you came into the first team and you won the French title. So how was it back then? Talk to us about the old times. And, and, and also, for people that are listening that may be a bit younger, what was it like in those days? Because obviously the sport was amateur. Was it was it cigarette smoking in the changing room at half time, or was it was it kind of more professional than people think? No, but the, the, the difference uh, in the past, uh, the rugby was amateur, and with the rugby amateur, all the clubs, all the clubs uh, was uh, approximately with uh, the same budget, and uh, there were 
the, the money was uh, not uh, s something to, to have uh, uh, the players and to move the players uh, because the, the players, uh, there were a few hel uh, helps for, for players when they need uh, for, for one career for the university or it was uh, something uh, what like a help, uh, but the each player had to work in uh, one job. I, I was a PE teacher in, uh, when I started, and I worked uh, for the national uh, education. After I worked for one company uh, called uh, Lee Cooper, uh, like a public relation, and after I created my company, you play rugby for your pleasure, but your pleasure it was <laughs> as well in uh, the club when it was amateur. You had to win. <laughs> And uh, because uh, when you go uh, in one competition, it's to win the competition. Eh? Or, um, and now we are professional, uh, and uh, it's a different, uh, it's a different, uh, uh, because um, uh, the player um, um, can earn money because he's a job uh, rugby player. It's a job, like a uh, PE teacher. It was my job uh, be before. I think I think I should I should have mentioned this from the start. Um, th this guy is probably th the most humble um, ex uh, absolute world superstar you will ever meet. Okay, so it's 111 French caps. Um, I only I think there's only Fabien Pelouse who basically um, beat him in in the French caps in the history of this sport. Uh, when he says he created his own company, he created a huge communication company that was pioneer, uh, basically in France and Europe in all the corporate events that you could have around rugby. Uh, he was, when he said he was playing for Agen, yes, they won the, the premiership and he was definitely the best center in the world at that time and the youngest. So he's trying to sum up things by making them very, very fluid and easy and small. <laughs> it was absolutely ginormous what he did at the time and what he's done his whole thing. And then speaking about pioneer, because it's something that I, a question I always wanted to ask him. Um, he was, I think probably one of the first Frenchmen to play in the premiership, uh, going to the series. And I wanted to know at that time, how does this happen? Is it an agent? Is it around a bar that you speak to somebody and you go and, and just how did it happen? And how did you feel? The, the series, um, Adventure was uh, something uh, just magnificent, superb. And uh, why I, I play uh, for, for in England, uh, in the North London? Why? Uh, it's because um, uh, I, I, I met uh, so somebody a uh, few, few years earlier uh, on, with my company, Cella uh, Communication. Uh, I was uh, coming uh, uh, to, to find a few. Uh, uh, managers of company, uh, and I met uh, in Paris Simon Gillam, <laughs> mm. and, and and Simon Gillam is uh, uh, today uh, president of uh, the Brive mm. Rugby Club, and Simon Gillam told me that uh, um, if I could go to Dutch Wharf, one uh, North London uh, small town, to to go to see uh, one team. Uh, because uh, his brother was uh, the president of the club. Um, and uh, his brother is lawyer, president. Uh, and I said, uh, yes, of course, uh, you are my friend. Uh, you, you, we, are, um, we work to, together uh, for a few things. And uh, uh, it's normal uh, to, to try to, to help uh, one uh, small club. And uh, well, I, I don't speak very well English, but, but, or I speak bad English, but uh, um, at, the, at this moment, I don't speak any, well, any word in, in English. And uh, we spent one, uh, one day there. Uh, I, I did one training session with them. We spoke uh, after, and um, I spoke with a newspaper, uh, with a TV. And uh, two weeks later, um, Nigel Ray called me. And uh, I met uh, Nigel Ray, Nigel Ray uh, in London. And uh, the, the first uh, meeting was uh, one, one nice meeting. And uh, I discovered one, uh, one guy superb. And uh, today I have uh, always a um, relation as well, communication uh, with him, with uh, his family. 
and um, for that it was the first link with uh, Saracens. I got uh, another contact with uh, WASPs with uh, Richmond as well uh, a week later. But uh, with Nigel, there were one special um, relation for the first relation. And I, I kept my first meeting with, uh, um, for this move or supposed move. <laughs> it, it, uh, my first meeting was uh, the good me meeting, in fact. And uh, I decided to, to go because um, I played always in the same club in France, uh, in Agen. And uh, at, uh, at the end of the career, uh, I was uh, more than 30. I thought uh, it was one opportunity to try to speak more English, better English, but that uh, it was not uh, something I reached uh, exactly but uh, as well to discover uh, rugby in another country, uh, another people, and it was uh, fabulous because uh, I discovered uh, one club uh, and with, uh, I, I think it's about um, uh, Kieran Bracken uh, and other players uh, like uh, Francois Piena as well, um, Michael Lina. There, there were players from around the world, uh, one French, uh, imagine uh, one French who didn't uh, didn't speak uh, uh, English, and uh, it, it was uh, quite uh, quite hard. And with my friend uh, Kieran Bracken, uh, because I, I drove him uh, a lot uh, between the city, uh, London city, to uh, the North London, and we tried to 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 speak uh, English for me and French for him. The way Le Singe, the where is the monkey? The monkey is on the tree. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, Le Singe, Le Singe is down there. Where is Brian? Uh, Brian is in the kitchen. kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it was um, uh, Kieran and I. Mm -hmm. Very good memories about uh, that and another one, of course. And uh, what is the story? Why Sarah Saint uh, is a link with uh, somebody I met uh, with my job uh, and uh, after uh, I spent one year and one more and uh, Nigeria would like I stayed one, uh, third, uh, one more year, but I was uh, 36 year old and said, um, I, I wouldn't like to finish with one injury because uh, it's uh, something harder. When, uh, when you can play or you think you can play and uh, you, you have to say stop, I wouldn't like that. And um, in one career, it's better when we come to stop when we decide, you know? Yeah. And, um, I, uh, and uh, I finished, in fact, uh, because the first year was uh, quite difficult. Um, when we finished sixth on the, on the table uh, with a series, and the second year, um, at the end, we were first, uh, and uh, there were one more game to be played uh, to to stop the to, to have uh, the, the championship uh, uh, finished eh? uh, over, and uh, the game was uh, Harlequins against uh, Newcastle, and Newcastle. Uh, was second on the table. They won in uh, Newcastle with uh, one great player, 18 year old. I was uh, 36. Uh, two players to for one. Uh, it was Johnny Wilkinson was playing number 10 on, the, on this team. The fabulous Johnny Wilkinson. And uh, a week later, uh, we won the, the cup against Wasp, so we won the, the cup. It was the first um, first division title for, for Saris. Uh, and it was a, a good... Uh, I, I like to, to speak about that because uh, it's another story. And for my family, it was fabulous as well. Uh, my, my son, uh, when he was uh, three to five years old when we were there, and uh, he was speaking uh, in French. He, he said, "Je veux pas parler anglais avec l'accent, <laughs> with uh, an accent. Je veux pas parler anglais." Today 
is the best English man uh, speaker, <laughs> speaker uh, on the family. He speaks very, very well. And uh, he came back for Saracens uh, on the academy when he was young, before he, he stayed uh, one year in South Africa. Uh, he would like to discover uh, the world uh, as well because he was a young rugby player. And with that, uh, he, he, has, he got one bachelor, one uh, international bachelor. Uh, rugby is fun for that as well because uh, maybe because I spent a few years, after two years in London um, for my family, for the kids. They would like to discover as well the, the, the world. And Philippe, you mentioned um, you won a trophy there and, and you did well during your, your time there in the second year and some of the players that you played with other global superstars. So you were a part of the start of the Saracens journey that has led to them winning European Cups and Premiership titles. So, uh, but you've seen this season with Nigel Ray, who is obviously a friend of yours. It's been a, a sad time for him this year and it's been difficult and he's had to step, step away from the club. They've had lots of problems with the salary cap. But you want to ask, you want to ask Philippe now that you heard on the post, they already <laughs> dodged <laughs> salary cap <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> did, <laughs> did, <laughs> did, <laughs> did Nigel Ray buy you a house? <laughs> but what have you, what have you made, what, what do you make of it, Philippe, from the outside? When you look at Saracens now, it, it's been a sad, sad year for them, hasn't it? Uh, uh, for, for me, uh, yeah, um, Saracens, uh, my, my, my first club, in fact, I played a small club uh, uh, near Agen called, uh, called Clerac. That is uh, when I started. I played rugby league one year <laughs> and after um, uh, rugby union. And uh, Agen, is, uh, it, it was a dream. And uh, I don't know if you can understand what it means for, for me. And, and uh, what I discover after. And uh, I can say just um, one big, big thanks for Agen and for rugby to, uh, because um, that gave me a lot of strength huh? and uh, discover the different uh, things uh, well, uh, like uh, the world, like uh, friends, like uh, uh, competition, how to, to be uh, um, invest uh, in one uh, action. And, uh, um, and uh, Saracens mean uh, something um, international for, for me uh, because uh, it was uh, going in London, uh, it was a totally different uh, agent, 35,000 people, London, million and million people. Uh, there were uh, the differences. Eh? And, um, uh, I am sad to today uh, because I, I know N N Nigel Ray uh, is a is a one uh, great person. Uh, somebody I have a lot, a lot respect to, for him because uh, he, he give uh, and uh, he, he he give and uh, he he made uh, a lot, a lot for for rugby for one club. He loves. And he loved always this club, Saracens. He was uh, his club. Uh, he, he would like to uh, to support uh, always in, in life. Huh? He was uh, supporting what he, when he was young, and um, he, he made uh, um, uh, he create one um, one thing very very um, uh, big, uh, very big um, with. Um, uh, but um, to, to today uh, we, we speak about the, the salary cap, eh, the, the problem with the salary cap. Uh, a few years, years ago, we, 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 there, there were no salary cap and uh, um, we, we, uh, nobody spoke about uh, the money or the, the different thing. And he created one club to play uh, on, on the best. He, he was um, thinking how to have a one good team, but uh, and uh, to help the players as well, because uh, there is the, the okay directly the uh, the, the money you earn with with uh, with uh, rugby right? or playing rugby, and uh, because it works for uh, building uh, the different commercial uh, building and 
and he, and uh, he, he tried to, to give uh, for the players um, uh, a shareholder, sh shareholder, mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. shareholder yeah. for, and the shareholder, it can be uh, 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 big money or it can be zero money. Yeah? It can be the, the both. And uh, um, I know him. And uh, I am very sad because uh, for for the club and for him because he give he gave a lot for 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 the club or a lot for his person a lot for his money and uh, yeah, because he loves a lot uh, this club is is not to be the people we can see everywhere around the world because you cannot see him anyway uh, is somebody I remember. Uh, there were one, there were one president uh, um, with, with him uh, on the official uh, stand, and him, he was always with the families uh, when there, there were the, the club. And after the, the game, when we could have one dinner, when we play away with the family, with the wife, with everybody, he, he, he can offer one, one, uh, one, one uh, night with, with, with the dinner. That is the spirit of uh, Nigeria, uh, to, to be with another people on the club, on, on his place, with the family. He, he liked a lot uh, to, 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 to spend the time with, with, with the people. Uh, and uh, and uh, if he could see people uh, happy, he was happy. Mm. Yeah? And uh, I have... Um, I am uh, fair. I think you can. Um, I have a, a small emotion as well when I speak about uh, his men and the, the family because uh, he, he he did. We made a, a, a lot of things for for this for Saracens club, for his club. Uh, he loves to be and to, and to watch the, the games and uh, he support his club always in, in the life and uh, uh, he, uh, uh, for me he, he, uh, he didn't do one mistake on his mind for, for me he's a one is a, a superb man uh, and a uh, superb manager as well and um, the Saracens and my, my son went uh, to to uh, the academy few years after um, after uh, I was playing there, and he told me a few things. It was just marvelous to say, um, yeah, the, this club they're with a player, they know where they, they want to go. Uh, they, are, they have a commitment is incredible. To, the commitment they have, but the 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 spirit uh, they they can have uh, each other and. A lot of message uh, that, that he gave me, I was, uh, it was like I discovered years earlier, but stronger. You, you touched as well on, on a couple of players that you played with. You mentioned um, Michael Lina and Francois Pinar. What was it like arriving at a club at the start of professional rugby and playing with those guys at Saracens? Uh, I, I play with a legend player and uh, for me, um, I knew that uh, uh, Michael Lina signed uh, b before I signed to Saracens. Eh? I, I knew that, but uh, Michael Lina uh, signed. And uh, there is uh, something you want to, um, to share uh, on the pitch. Uh, you, you will be as well with a player like them and like him. And Francois, player, uh, Francois Piana arrived just just uh, quite later. He arrived uh, six uh, or five months later. And when you you knew that uh, he could come on the club, we were really really happy. I was impressed about uh, Francois Piana as well. He's a he's a man. Uh, he's impressive. No? And uh, to have a share to have shared. Um, time with them, it was uh, easy, it was um, too quick, 
because uh, if I could uh, again uh, spend the time, it, it could uh, be, be fine. But with this player today, I, like in Agen, it was it's uh, um, end of the career uh, in a foreign country, but today. If they want to come in Agen, they know that they can call me, they're invited, they can uh, stay at home, no problem. But I know as well, if I go to Australia, to Italy, with, uh, because, uh, or to London or South Africa, because uh, Michael is uh, in, in, in London, he's in Italy, he can be in Australia. <laughs> but I will be invited, no problem. No? Uh, it was uh, as well. I, I want to tell you that it was fantastic to have uh, the different players around the world, uh, to, to have uh, players uh, like uh, Kieran uh, Bracken, and uh, uh, there were the, the different players uh, from uh, England as well. But everything was organized to have uh, uh, one, one team, one really team. Uh, when we arrived, because uh, there were few players, uh, there were more than 30 years old. Uh, there were uh, communication. I understood that uh, maybe it was uh, the cimetière aux éléphants. I don't know how, how to tell you that in English. <laughs> eh? The cimetière aux éléphants. Yeah. yeah, and in fact, uh, well, when you, uh, you understand that, you, you listen that, mm. <laughs> and uh, we, we just uh, would like to be together, training, spending a good time, and, and uh, we, we spent uh, uh, two years, or I spent two, two, two years, with uh, one team that want to share time together on the pitch, out of the pitch, uh, with the family. Uh, we, we got a few events, we organized uh, uh, the, 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 the different events. It was just uh, like, what, like a, a big family. Huh? Yeah. And, and uh, for that, uh, I, I said he's the one special club. I think the way, the way you described that culture at Saracens when you were there, Philippe, um, it's obvious that you were at the start of what, what they've become now because that's what everyone says who's been at Saracens, whether they've been there for a year or three years or 10 years, they all say that the culture there is something special. So it's obvious that you were a part of that right at the start. And I'm sure Benji from his time at Leicester as well as at Claremont would, would echo, certainly in England and in Leicester, that culture off the field is, is, is very important. <laughs> But we should probably talk a lot about your international career because <laughs> we spent a lot of time talking about club rugby for, for a man who's won 111 caps and has had some incredible moments. And I think Benji would probably want to ask you about you know, the try from the end of the world in, in Auckland in 1994 and also the, Benji in the 95 World Cup you wanted to ask Philippe about? Yeah, um, basically there's a happy, happy memory and a sadder memory. Let's start with a sad one. 1995 semi final against South Africa. Abdelatif Benazi. Is it a try? Is it not a try? Under torrential rain. I think it's the English weather that makes me remind me of this game. <laughs> but I, I, I was born in that generation of the question, you know, is it a try? Is it not a try? Should have. No, no. But, but that's the time where he was absolutely killing it. And then my second question is more because Philippe will not tell you, but he. he he did a tremendously good job as a team manager from the under 20s. And, and I want to know where, if you compare 1994, I think it's 1994, I think the, the try in Oakland from 100 meters when they, when they win there. And where is, is the, that's the question I get asked all the time. Where is the French flair? Mm. Um, 1995, um, not sure the, the try was uh, <laughs> called. Uh, I was just be, uh, behind uh, Abdel Benazi, trying to push him, push him. I, I, I am sure uh, he was uh, behind the, the line, but I don't know if he scored. Uh, and Abdel said I scored, uh, uh, but uh, I, I don't know uh, because I was behind him. I, I couldn't, uh, I could not see. 
the, the ball because uh, Abdel is a very he has a is large, no? It's big <laughs> guy, but, uh, and the ball is very small. <laughs> and uh, but uh, uh, not just about uh, this try, but uh, the the end of the game um, was difficult for for the Springbok. Uh, we were often uh, on the 22 or in, in the. Um, on this, uh, on their uh, half uh, pitch, and uh, not uh, far from the trial line, but uh, we we uh, he likes uh, just a few few uh, few things. Huh? It was uh, I, I remember as well um, one 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 move or the one scrum or the ball. Um, was uh, played uh, by with, with uh, number nine, and uh, he's, uh, maybe he, 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 he ran with the ball and he scored uh, one one try as well. But uh, the ball maybe I didn't see and I didn't watch again uh, the, the game eh? never. And and uh, the, the, I, we don't know if the ball um, uh, was off of the scrum behind the the prop. Or, or not, you know, and uh, the the scrum uh, maybe uh, maybe there were one mistake, maybe not, and uh, they they will did different time on the end of the, the game, or where uh, maybe we we could have scored, but we did uh, we did did not, and it was really really difficult during few minutes uh, and a few hours and uh, the night. And uh, as well, the, the few days just before, and we were lucky to play one game just a few days later, because we were always thinking about the semi-final, about a few moves, about a few minutes on, on the game, and because we have to play the third game, the, the place, the first place of the championship against England. And uh, because we won the, this game, uh, is like a soulagement. Uh, is a, I don't know the the, the term, we but it's like if uh, you said, "Oh, we 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 can go away or from the the World Cup. We come we can come back at home with the job made." You know? And uh, because of this game, it was very close. And uh, for me. Uh, is a past yeah? for few players, maybe for the manager, for they think uh, something wrong on the World Cup, like uh, wrong on the World Cup, or they think something uh, uh, too too hard, or they, they are still thinking there were mistakes on, on this game, and uh, for me, it's different. Uh, there was there were the game. I spent two three years of uh, two three days. Sorry, very difficult. Really, I could not sleep, and uh, not because uh, I would like to do, go to the club to dance. No, but because uh, I was uh, thinking about the try, the try not try, uh, and uh, the, the different point of, of the game and the defeat, and uh, because we lost. And uh, after the uh, the third place against England. It was it was uh, the, the different and uh, and something I would like to say as well. After the third game, uh, we spent one night with, with a English player. Uh, during the the five nations, we we spent one one moment uh, as well. We started, in fact, to have more relationship. And after this game, we we spent a game. One, one, one time, two together, and I remember the two hooker. They were speaking at uh, just uh, <laughs> five centimeters uh, with uh, uh, Gonzalez and um, and the fabulous uh, number two uh, hooker from England. Uh, um, Brian Moore, no? Brian Moore, yeah. It was mm -hmm. fantastic because uh, one 
Uh, like two Ryan crazy Moore. guys, he, two completely he, he absolute nutters. Of, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't speak a lot French, and uh, Jean-Michel Gonzalez didn't speak a lot uh, English. <laughs> but they spent two hours speaking with a few beers and uh, at uh, five centimeters. It was one image is fabulous, and that we speak about uh, all the the games uh, between uh, from um, between France and, uh, and England. Where they said, "Why well, it was hard now," and uh, this night was totally the opposite of the mm. the, the game we we could have played. <laughs> and this one is a French flair, but is a flair. But, but why the French? Flair? Be, be, because I think in uh, there were one time where, uh, if we have to compare the French team with another one, uh, na uh, nation. Uh, countries uh, they played uh, maybe more uh, uh, rugby organized and not organized uh, or with, with uh, this flair but uh, as well there were the that is the one strength for, for, for me but as well there were, there were weaknesses in France it was a discipline for example or the, uh, well, uh, the discipline was uh, something we, we could uh, understand uh, a lot in the past. Eh? And um, uh, when we, we watch one, 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 one game, we can see everywhere in the, in the world now, team uh, that, 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 that want to, to play from uh, everywhere on, on the pitch. But uh, this try, 95, uh, uh, 94, sorry, in, in New Zealand, is a uh, one try um, that we we want to to, to see be, because it's just rugby. Uh, it's just uh, if you want to play, you can do. If all the players want to play this rugby, but of course uh, you have to to, to have. Um, uh, on one fitness uh, on the top, and uh, but as well, you have to know what you can do uh, on the pitch. If you play every uh, from uh, all the uh, all of the the place on, on the pitch, if you play always, always, and uh, you are uh, very tired after 30 minutes, and you cannot uh, analyze, you cannot. Uh, Organize your brain, your, yes, your, your brain, your brain, uh, your brain. It, it, it will be um, very bad for the future and for the next minutes. In fact, uh, you, you, you must know a lot your team, your players, uh, and uh, with uh, your, your, your preparation. Your fitness, uh, if you are fit enough, if you uh, or, or not, or uh, well, um, to 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 play one rugby uh, with, with a lot of flair, but the flair can arrive anyway uh, and uh, any time. But you have to choice uh, as well uh, when you 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 can do. Uh, uh, it's not uh, something. Um, for me, the flair is uh, something with as well organized. Yeah. That is strange, but if it's not organized, there, there, there will be a, la a lack, a lack uh, on, on your team. I think for everybody that watched the French national team during the 80s and 90s, French flair was what we saw, it's what got us going, it's what we loved watching with the French team. I think sort the organization that you're talking about has been lacking for a long time with the French team. But now that Fabien Galtier and his coaching team have come in, we saw glimmers of hope and some really positive rugby during the Six Nations. Do you think with Fabian and his coaching team now, we might see the return of a bit more flair rugby from the French national team? I believe um, on, on that. Uh, because um, um, when, when uh, the, 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 the manager... Uh, uh, believe on that. Um, 
all the players can, can believe on, on that. Uh, Fabi uh, Fabien Galtier uh, is uh, well organized to, to, uh, on, on, for, for, um, for his team. Uh, and uh, he, he give them uh, all the strengths to, um, to know where uh, he can be uh, uh, the, um, the player, the, the, the best um, to, 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 to play the, the, the move okay? and to, to give the, the best to, to, to play the, the, the move. Um, after I, 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 I don't know what they can do or not or what um, um, the, the relation that he can have with, with the players, the, 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 all the, the speeches to give uh, the confidence for the players. He looks, he looks that uh, the, the players are well organized on, on the pitch and he looks they can uh, play their rugby. We've spoken a lot about some of the amazing moments in your career. Do you have a, a, a favourite moment, a favourite game from your career? And who is the best player that you played against in your career? Uh, it's a harder question of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will give you two, two time uh, on the career, in fact. Or, or free time. Yeah? Uh, firstly, is uh, the first title. Uh, I, no, not like you. But I, I just two um, uh, French uh, championship. Um, you have uh, how how many? More, <laughs> a lot more. Eh? No, yeah? no, no, no. Only, only, only oh, yeah. I thought more. <laughs> and uh, the first title uh, in '92, I was uh, 20 year old. My first season, my first season, I said, "Good is fine. I can stop rugby." First year, <laughs> champion, <laughs> and it was uh, all the games before the final and the final and the big uh, uh, nights and uh, after the, the title is uh, just magnificent. Uh, and as well, the week and the game against uh, uh, Australia in uh, 1987. And the first World Cup, the semi-final, the, the week before was very, very hard because we won but with difficulties against uh, Fiji before and uh, the, the game as well. And 10, 15 minutes after the game over, we were all the players with a few supporters, French supporters, uh, they came in Australia in the center of the pitch and we, we sang different uh, song, uh, Basque song <laughs> with uh, Pascal Ondart and, uh, and other players. And uh, well, we spent 15 minutes. Wow, it was just uh, magnifique. And uh, New Zealand 1994, uh, you spoke about uh, the, the try, uh, uh, the um, Jean-Luc Sadorni uh, try. But, the, this try and uh, this game was uh, just magnifique because uh, it was um, uh, one game won and it was a second game won in New Zealand um, for this two. And uh, that's not uh, happen often. And, uh, and I, I think it was in Auckland, Eden Park. No, there was no national team they won since this game. You can see, uh, maybe uh, is France uh, won the last game uh, uh, in Eden Park against All Blacks. <laughs> well, oh and uh, oh that is is a uh, good good memories about uh, and uh, a lot of things to rugby. I, I can tell you. Uh, all again, rugby for me is uh, something uh, I can say the big, a big, big one. Thanks, uh, because uh, I, I met a lot of people but today. Uh, why today the, this uh, interview? Man? Because of rugby uh, as well, and uh, we can meet the different people. 
and we can share the different uh, adventure uh, games or the, the different things and uh, we can discover countries um, um, I try to play to, to speak English as well a little bit <laughs> done well Philippe very well <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Philippe, and um, good luck with Agen yeah. for finishing 12th and, or, or 11th okay. and winning, winning the European <laughs> Cup this year. World Cup. Merci beaucoup, Allez. Philippe. Merci. Merci. Merci à vous tous. Hein. Superbe. Allez, ciao. À bientôt. Ciao. 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 Bientôt, au revoir. Ouais. Merci. Total legend. We didn't even get to ask him about 100 caps. I've just realized. 111. 111. I know, the first but the thing person about 200, isn't he? exactly ridiculous, and his generation as well. I think people forget they only played four games a year. There weren't summer tours, there weren't autumn tests. There was the Five Nations where you played four test matches, and that was it. Often, so the fact that he was the first guy to do it, he played for so long, and he was a freak. He was an absolute. When, freak. when did he ever? Then when did he say once anything about himself? Nothing. No. He's, he's talking about Michael Lina, about François Pina, about he's yeah. got 111 caps. You ask any British player at that time he was by a mile the best center in the world Machine. he was doing things that nobody ever has ever done he thinks i've got more titles than him what the hell is he talking about i mean look he's he's like he's he's done and won everything he was part of a french team that dominated european rugby in the six nations if they didn't win it then they would they would basically be be second to something i never won the six nations or anything and he's still trying to compare he's just and he, he's kind he's relaxed he's super open-minded uh, I'm telling you, if you push on him on Nigel Ray, he will shed a tear. That's really the type of guy that he, he is. Close, eh? yeah, he's, yeah, that's, he's that's, close, That's who he is. That's, that's what he loves for. I was fortunate enough to do a, a speaking game with him before the Wales-France game, the last Six Nations that we won in the millennium. I'm telling you, he was in tears after the game because he was just so happy about finally seeing the boys being relieved of the massive victory and that stadium is really precious. But then he was singing with all the Welsh. He said, oh, I love the Welsh. They're so nice. They're so kind. <laughs> they love to sing. They're just so kind. You know, he likes kindness, people, traveling. Um, like, like he's saying thank you to Ajan. Ajan, bend over. He's got a statue in the middle of the village. They're the ones saying thank you. He's saying thank you to rugby. He's, he's inspired, I don't know, millions of people to watch, play, love, and fall in love with rugby over the years. We should be saying thank you. You know, it's just, it's just that 100%. type of dudes. And you don't, you don't meet a lot of them, to be fair, like that. Um, you meet a lot of guys that will explain to you how things should be done, explain to you how they would have done better. Um, he, he's just a legend of a bloke, and he, um, I've only got admiration for him. And Benji, you asked him about the French flair and where it's gone and, and, and how he was renowned for flair and that team he played in, the tries they scored. We went through all that. But sometimes, I mean, people don't forget, but I suppose if, you, if you've only watched highlights or you, you haven't watched too much of him during his playing days, he was hard. In defence, wasn't he? He was, he was hard as anything. He, he was one of the only centres. He was roughly 100 Ks for one. He was like 98 Ks or something like that. So he was the first solid sort of athlete that could play in the center. To be totally honest, he could have played professional rugby now. Yeah. He was he is that good, that fit, that that much of a freak. He was or he was ahead of and over in, than anybody else. But but he had pace and he had the flair. He was just incredible. I mean, look at his highlights when he's 20 and he wins the first title with Ajan then he went straight to the French team. I was like, who is this freak? He was running through people, running around them and with class. He just had class. He had this thing where everything's fluid. He, makes th he made things look easy and fluid and beautiful. And he was a tough, tough bugger, don't get me wrong. But, but, uh, but he was never dirty and cheap shotting. He was way ahead of his time. There's also a really yeah. good story um, that came out of Asia. And there's a boy called Luke Hamilton that played there. Yeah. He was a Welsh kid. And I'm not, I'm not sure if you'd seen this story, but I thought I would say it. it's just really short. But Luke Hamilton said, look, I, I saw Philippe as president came into change rooms before the game. And he, he went to shake my hand or what I thought he was going to do was shake my hand. And he, he sort of brought me in closely, gestured, said, come here. And he headbutted him straight in the face. <laughs> and that's how he got Luke up for his first game. And actually, he, he nutted him straight in the face. So the old school is still there. He was an absolute 
specimen and a freak when he played, but he still got it. Um, and uh, that was what Luke said afterwards. He just learned to keep, keep his head down yeah, around yeah. Philippe, work hard <laughs> and do well for the team. It was he, all about the team, but he's he, a he legend. Could be, he could have moved to, to Paris, to London, to wherever, just to build up his businesses. And he's, got, he, and he's talking about Michael Lina, you know, being in Italy and Australia. He could be precisely doing the same thing. He decided to go back to Agen, which is a tiny little place, basically stuck between Dordogne and Toulouse and Bordeaux, let's say. But which is clearly, like he said, 35,000 people. They're in top 14. It's a 35,000 people town. Well, cast is pretty much the same thing, but uh, they don't have the same sponsor behind it. It's, it's, um, and he's, this, he's dedicated his life to that. And then he comes in the change room and he, he didn't headbutt to split in half. He was just like a motivational headbutt, if you know what I mean. <laughs> a gentle, he's not that a gentle headbutt. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. A gen- like if it could be gentle. Come here. <laughs> a gentle little headbutt. But that's, that's how committed and how much he, he cares and wants to give back to his club. Is, that's, that's him. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Benji. A massive thank you to Philippe Salah, a legend of the game in France and in, in the world. And thanks to all of you for listening and watching as well. We're on YouTube, on all good podcast platforms. Um, and get in touch with us on Twitter, Instagram as well. Drop us a question, a message, leave us a review. And we'll be back with another episode very soon. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers, fellas. Bye.